Hello and welcome back to Space Engineers. In today's video, we're looking at another large block ship that's intended to be a starter ship into our adventure to return to way to start survival mode rather than having the traditional drop pod and working yourself up. So this thing that I'm currently standing on is called the Triad Class Personal Shuttle, which is this lovely thing over here. So this doesn't really look like much, it's a very basic ship, but it features all the basics you need from a survival kit, a basic refinery, and it's only got iron thrusters to boost it around. So yes, it's going to be a space star only for you to go out about exploring and work yourself up to hydrogen, then take yourself down to a planet and go from there. So this ship, as per what the creator stated on the Steam Virtual page, is a ship that can be molded, it can be rebuilt, teared down, and well, just built up depending on how far you are in survival mode, and depending on what blocks you have unlocked. This ship is not intended to stay like this as it is right now. This is just a starting point to give you a nice alternative start compared to the traditional drop pod falling down to a planet or a moon. Anyway, pressing F10 and find the sensible menu the Triad Class Puzzle Shuttle is 290 large blocks using a couple of the DLC packs. We see up to here what I just talked about, where it says it's a ship primarily intended for survival mode as a starter ship, and it's very easy to expand out, it's not too heavy on the PCU, and the way it's been set up, it's very easy to print out if you do want to build it in survival mode rather than spawning it in at the very start and using that as your starting point. Anyway, down to here is your PC, your block count, and of course what that has, so we've got all of our onboard basic production blocks, then down to here it uses no mods, it uses no scripts, but of course it does use a few DLC packs. So we'll give this thing a thumbs up, move around towards the very front, have a quick look around the outside, quick tour of the interior, because it does have a very pleasant interior on the inside, and then we'll go fly around, maybe just slam it into an asteroid. So my character can now bugger off just a little bit, off he goes. And here we are for the very front of the Triad Class Personal Shuttle. So right at the very front here, what we've got is a magnetic plate, which we can use to dock this thing up, or to use it to clamp onto other stuff like say a floating container, another chip we want to keep, another chip that we want to drag it to a grinding pit, and do whatever with. Below that is our connector, which is attached onto our fancy square piston, to be able to extend all the way out, connect it up to a station, and of course to load and load any kind of goods into the ship. On the very left and right hand side, we see our lovely angled floodlights from the latest DLC pack, as well as the start of a few iron thrusters to boost this thing around. Looking at it on the sides, we'll go like so, first of all. See, it's got an orange door to be able to get in and out. There is no double door for an airlock, but there is a handy little button to cycle the air vents to make sure you don't waste any precious oxygen. Of course, there's a green light on this side, there'll be red on the opposite. And then we can see some lovely curved conveyors just linking everything together, put the battery there underneath our floodlights. Coming across to the very rear of this vehicle, they might just ignore the side station for the moment, and that's what we get. So we've got a gyroscope, we've got a hydrogen tank, we've got a hydrogen engine just sneakily over there. Down below here is our gravity generator, a small interior turret below there, and of course one right above there for a little bit of protection. And then turning attention over to this part, here we are, this is our thruster pod. So we've got two at the front, we've got two at the back, we've got two on the side, and the rest of the thrusters will be on the main body of this vehicle. And we're looking at it like so. There we are. We come all around towards the very back of this thing. There we go. So we've got ourselves an antenna, we've got an ore detector, so we can go all the way up to our asteroids and start scouting out all patches to help build up this ship. Then down the here, we've got is a programmable block with nothing going on with it, so you can put something handy on there if you can think of it. And of course, down below here, right where our interior turret is sitting, we've got ourselves a remote control block, so we can just pull this thing over, over to us when we're down on foot. Sitting along below this thing, there's our other iron thrusters, there's an O2 H2 generator, there's our gravity generator, here's below where our thrusters are sitting. Then towards the front, there's all access for our cargo container. Towards from there, there's another interior turret. And there's, of course, our square piston, which our connector is attached onto. Moving up, looking down. There we go, there's our little bridge to drive it around. Across the top here, not too much to talk about. Then towards the main body, there's our hydrogen edges on both sides. There's our gyroscopes. There's our interior turret once again. There's our iron thrusters to move us down. There's another cargo container, this time with a conveyor cam on top to seal up that access point. And towards the back, near that iron thruster, we've got a spotlight for an extra bit of decoration. And with that, that's a brief look around the outside of the Tri-Class Puzzle Shuttle, and does look great without all being sub, and I can personally see a lot of ways to upgrade this thing to make it bigger, attach big guns onto this, and of course to just extend it all the way out. What I'd personally do if we look at it down like so, is say take this section, maybe just move it all the way around, just flesh out a bit more, so then we've got a big open area to build stuff inside, put a large refinery inside that section, and have it as a lopsided ship to fly around. But then that's just what I was thinking, Yes, that's it, the outside. So grab and hold my character flying all the way back over to the ship. Here we go, wherever he's gone. Now we've got to find that orange door on this side. Opening up this, coming inside, dropping down, and here we are. So here's our button to suckle the air vents. There we go. And looking around on this section, we've got our bed, 
got a little kitchen block, we got a survival kit, cryopod, and that's about it for the inside. So we're going to respawn, recharge ourselves, have a little rest inside here, and of course come across and cook some food, wash it up, and then go to sleep. Very good stuff. But of course the windows appear outside, and you're impending doom. Moving towards the front here, there's your Evan in the floor, another window to peer outside to see who's trying to get into your ship. Then in the here we've got a small little ladder that comes all the way up, and here we are in our bridge. Looking behind us is some big controller box, oh yep, there's a lovely orange light. Then getting in the seat, first person view, this is all we get. So bring up the HUD, we've got two tabs to go through, and here we go with number one. So that's going to be for our top mounted camera so we see exactly where we're going, but it's upside down so the controls are going to be inverted, so moving left is right, and up is down. It might throw you off when you first come into the camera, but it's easy rectifiable, and you can always use some mods to actually fix it up. Every command out of that and press number two, that's for your full lights on the side there, which will blind you when you turn them all on. There we go, looking from a distance, it's like just a giant laser beam coming off it. And anyway, number three, number four, for your thruster override to move all the way forwards, and to bring it all the way back down. Number five and six for your iron thrusters, turn the ones at the front, or turn them off all together to put you in cruise, and of course to conserve power on your adventure. Number 7 for that magnetic plate at the front there to lock and lock it. Then number 8 and number 9 supports for your connector and piston to accept it all the way out and to connect it up to something. There we go, just let it all go out. And it'll take a little bit of time. Pulling it all the way back in, over to tan number 2, here we go one more time. So we've got our hydrogen tanks, our oxygen tanks to stop part on and off. We've got O2 HU generators on and off, hydrogen engines, all the detector, and then our turrets to turn them on and off and of course to change their targeting. I personally like to have them targeting weapons, so that's always a very good way to handle your enemies. Over to tab number 3, we've got nothing else, checking all the other tabs on here. There we go, so now it's time to fly this thing around. So moving forwards, this is what we get. So not the fastest thing in the world, but that's to be expected from a starting ship. We're going to be zipping around anywhere and flying around high speeds. No, this thing is going to take its sweet time going from A to B. Coming to a stop will be identical, so we don't need to worry about doing a 180, which is jolly good stuff. But again, it's going to take quite some time to come to a storm, so do fly carefully, especially if you're going towards your base, or to a station that doesn't have a safe zone shield. And we're moving left, and moving right is going to be the same as moving forwards and backwards, moving up, and of course moving down will be identical as well, so we've got the same speed all the way around this thing, which is jolly good stuff. Then as for gyro controls, this is the only difference on the ship. This is very, very sensitive for this size of ship. There's very little weight on here, but you may want to turn down the gyroscopes just a little bit, because it does feel very floaty, very overly responsive, to the point that was to come to first person view and spin the camera around, it does feel incredibly overly sensitive. So in the here, find the gyroscopes. There we go. That just turned down just a little bit. And there we are, it's a bit more meatier. Oh, came out of the seas. And a lot more responsive. But with that, that's it for the controls. That's it for how my handles and how it looks inside and out. Now it's time for me to finish off this video by slamming it into an asteroid. There's not too much else to do with it. So here we are, we're now cruising along to our destruction. I've activated the cruise control, put in the thruster override, so now I need to do nothing except watch this happen. So hiding all the HUD here, looking at it like so, that'll do quite nicely. And in about 5 seconds time, we're going to slam straight into the asteroid surface and hopefully deal a nice lot of damage. Here we go. And there we go, that was a nice big explosion. Haven't had one of them for a long time. Wait. Um. Huh. <laughs> I'm a little bit... I mean, the ship is this big. I wasn't expecting it to completely blow up like that and just have the cockpit remaining and a few other little bits and pieces flying around here. I was expecting the whole cockpit to get destroyed because that's what the explosion seemed like to me, not losing the entire ship in that. So do be aware of that if you slam into an asteroid because you might lose the entire ship. And anyway, I spawned it in the wrong way, so it's going to spawn in another one. There we go, that'll do quite nicely. And yes, as for that, there'll be a link to a description below to which you download the player out yourself. I highly recommend you do, as well as a link to the sky I was currently using. I believe it is called Christmas Lights. And I'll be back with another video some point soon. Bye bye.